All right, so let's continue on. I'm going to show you a hacky thing now. So this is an advanced thing. Let's go to an advanced thing. So notice all of these people are all bidding on the same search terms. So what can we do with that? Well, we can. How about if we can put our advert in front of the people who are visiting these websites just without going to Google. They just go to the website. Maybe they find it organically or something like that. How about if we can put our advert in front of those people too? So we get to kind of hack into the brappy.com.au website and steal all their customers. Would that be a good thing to do? You guys want to learn how to do that? Uh, uh, uh. Yes. All right. So cool. So here's how you do that. So be rappy. I'm just going to make a little note of some of these URLs. So I've got them. Be green. And you would just do this for yours as well. Honey bee wraps. They're your top three. That's pretty cool. Now, if I come down to audiences, click on audiences. I don't want to use my use one yet. I haven't had a chance to learn it. I don't want to use something I don't know. Is that a black hat I'm wearing? Not really. It's kind of, I'm going to get a little bit hacky in a minute for you, but not quite yet. We're still in uh, non-hackiness, all right? So select an ad group. Let's do the campaign level. Campaign, oh, not giving us that, bastard. Ad group, select an ad group. Oh, it's because it wants me to refresh. Please don't show me the new version that I haven't learned yet. That would be a disaster. All right, cool. Still got the same one. Select an ad group. Mm -hmm. And add to my ad group, that one. Ad group. Thank you. Oh, why are you letting me do this, you bastard? For some reason. Is it because I'm rushing? Thank you. All right, so now I've got a couple of different things here. Observations, which is so sexy. I can't even begin to tell you, but I'm not going to do that. Instead, I'm going to go with targeting. So here's where I can now target the customers of other websites. So if I type in my one here, so my main one was B Rappy from memory. So B Rappy. Notice it now tells me, do I want to target these particular ad aspects? Well, usually you would target all of that, okay? That would normally be a complete thing you would target. And then you could save that. And that becomes an audience target for you. And then you do that again. So let's just go back to my audiences. So now I've set up an audience in Google that I can now use to target ads directly at B Rappy customers. So it's like I've broke into their website, broke into their shop, and I'm going to steal all their customers. So I'll do it for my next one. Let's do the next one. I'm not going to do all of them, but I normally do all of them, okay? And then what I do is I form a market out of all of them. Eight selected, fantastic. There it is. And then you would form a an advert, and in the advert, you target people that have visited brappy.com.au plus begreenwraps.com.au, etc. And you send an advert to those, okay? So that's a very, very cool hack. It's pretty advanced, as you can tell, but it's a very, very cool hack to do, all right? All right. Next, let's continue on because I've got sidetracked there showing you some other cool shit. Demographics. Let's just quickly go and look at this. So these are the people that are clicking on the ads. So my age range is 18 to 24. Well, that's getting quite a few clicks. 25 to 34, 19. That's all pretty interesting. Pretty consistent across the board for those. But let's have a look at the click-through rate because that's important. 
the highest click-through rates come from my 18 to 24 year olds so they're the people who are most interested in what I'm doing they're the people who are most interested in what I'm doing as evidenced by them clicking the most on my adverts okay as evidenced by that so what we could do at this point is we could optimize a campaign for 18 to 24 year olds so that's one level of optimization but let's wait a minute and let's let's continue on and see what the next level is because now let's go to gender well true to form females far far higher than males when it comes to who's actually searching for this product so more females searching than male so now we know it is 18 to 24 year old females who make up the great proportion of people interested in the product let's have a look what else we've got household income so our main proportion of people so is down here the lower 50%, the lower 50%. So now we've got 18 to 24 female in the lower wage bracket. So potentially students and things like that. Potentially students and things like that. So, folks, what does that mean as far as our pricing strategy goes on Amazon? What does that mean as far as our pricing strategy goes? on Amazon. Uh, Michelle says, how does Google know the stats from these demographics? Because Google knows heaps and heaps and heaps of stuff about you. It's like Facebook. They know loads of stuff about you. It's crazy, Michelle. Sarah says, go for $19.95. All right, good. So, we now can say that it's a pretty good bet if we put our price band at 1995 then we're going to be able to target those folks who are at that point okay however however i'm going to show you a different way of doing it instead of dropping your price here i'm going to show you a different way to do it which is going to be much much more effective all right much much more effective so let's keep where we're at females 18 to 24 lower end of the pay scale let's go to locations let's see where these people are because now we can start getting pretty sexy in what we're doing so we want to do a geographic report and we're going to do a user location and we're going to do oops let me just move that out of the way we're going to do it by state first let's just have a look what's going on so that's interesting tasmania whilst it doesn't get many clicks only got three clicks it's got the highest click through rate which probably tells us that people in tassie are more inclined to be interested in eco-friendly products and things like that. And if you've ever been to Tasmania, that would hold true for sure. Okay, so it tells us that we could definitely run a campaign targeting people in Australia, and that would be a useful thing for us to do. But look at the difference. So New South Wales has got a much higher click-through rate than Victoria, which probably tells us that people in New South Wales are more interested in buying this particular eco-friendly product all right so again notice we're building up a demographic profile of who this person is of who this person is let's go a little bit deeper so if you wanted to i could do another step deeper oops go back to australia and i could look at my city now, oftentimes, you will see that your major cities is where you get the most clicks. But that just stands to reason because there's more people there. There's more people there. So you want to sort by CTR because that's what's going to tell you where the main people are who are actually interested in your product. So we've got Maitland, Kiama, Goulburn, 
Go to Goldburns, Ballarat, Newcastle, etc. Okay. Again, that's not going to be useful for all products, but it's definitely useful for some of them, as you will see. All right, last thing we want to check, last thing we want to check is the ad scheduling. And this is when people are actually clicking on the adverts, when people are actually clicking on the adverts. So we can see that Saturday and Sunday, well, that makes sense, on the weekends, people are clicking on our adverts. And we can also see that Friday and Thursday, well, they're terrible days for us to be um, running our adverts. So let's just make a note of that, folks. Make a note of that. Friday and Thursday, terrible days. But Wednesday, Tuesday, Monday are all good days. So for us to start optimizing, one thing we would do is we would remove Friday and Thursday from the days we show our adverts, okay? Super important, you just remove it from the days you show your adverts. And that's done in your settings, which I've just opened in a new tab, so I can keep that one live. You just remove it from there. You remove it from the days when your advert's going to get shown. And that way, your ad's not being shown to, to people who are not going to be interested in buying it. All right. That's, so it says here, ad schedule. Oops. It says all day, every day. Just there. He says, trying to highlight it. Having a moment. That's where you would take that out. Just to alter it in there, okay? See, you can change it here. Add schedule. So you change it there. So for this, we would do Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Was it Thursday? No, Thursday and Friday was shit ass, wasn't it? So we do an advert on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And then I would do a separate advert on Saturday and Sunday. Okay, a separate advert on Saturdays and Sunday. That's what I would do for that. But you want to take out the poor performing placements. Take them out, get rid of them. You don't want them in there. It gives you the money to spend somewhere else. Last thing I want to show you on this before we go into things a little bit deeper. The devices. All right. So you tell me, looking at this, where are most, sorry, what device are most people using to search on? What are they searching on? How are they searching? Uh, Michelle, so bid less if you keep showing for number one. That's correct. What does the word bid mean in this context? Exactly what it always means, the amount you are offering to pay. Uh, go cheaper, lower the price back in Big brother is whopping. Mobile phones. Good. All right. So here's where we start thinking this through. We now know we've got females 18 to 24 located in um, certain areas at the lower end of the pay scale. So possibly they're students. I'm not quite sure. Possibly students. And they're searching on their mobile phones. That's where they're looking to buy. All right. Now you could, and you should, check how your listing looks on a mobile phone. You should definitely do that. If you're seeing that um, um, mobile phone is number one, you should definitely check what your thing looks like on a mobile phone. To do that, if you're in Firefox, it's Tools from the, from the menu. It's Tools, then Web Developer, and then Responsive Design Mode. And it shows like that. And then you just hit refresh. And that's what this looks like on a mobile phone. So it looks pretty cool. Looks good. But if there's any problems with it, then you should change your listing based on lots and lots of people are searching on their mobile phones. And you'd be amazed how bad some listings look on mobile. They just look terrible. As I said earlier, this is a great listing. The guys have done an awesome job. So not such a big deal here. Um, but you should definitely check yours, particularly if you haven't had somebody professional do it. You've done it yourself. 
you should definitely go check it all right and i show you i show you so that not so not because the guys need to make any changes but because i want you to go and check your own listing all right all right so let us continue on <coughs> So we already know those cool things about it. We already know the person who is interested. We know how old they are. We know that they're very price sensitive. We know their age. We know their location. So let's go and optimize their adverts now for them. So one thing I told you already was you optimize the day parting. You could take it to another level. Do you think there would be a difference between somebody who is uh, searching on a Saturday and Sunday versus somebody who is searching on a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, for instance? Do you think there'd be a difference in those people? Yes, there definitely would be a difference in those people. So you, you could write your advert to reflect those people because they're different kinds of people, okay? The other thing you should definitely take into consideration is the time of day when they are searching. So let's just go into hour here. Do you think there is a difference between somebody who is searching um, at, I don't know, in, in uh, like 3 a.m. versus somebody who's searching just before dinner time? Do you think there's a difference in those two people? Somebody who's searching at 3 a.m. versus somebody who's searching at just before dinner time. There's definitely a difference in those people. Students are going to be up late, as Maria says. So they're much, you've got to talk to them, use their language. Super important. 3 a.m., breastfeeding mums. Absolutely. Well, if you wrote, let's suppose that you have got a breastfeeding product and you showed that advert to somebody between the hours of uh, 11 p.m. and 4 a.m., if you wrote in the advert, tired, breast, tired, question mark, breastfeeding at midnight, are you the only one, et cetera, et cetera. If you wrote an advert that spoke about those things, you can imagine that that would be a very, very compelling advert for somebody to click on. Menopause or women, yep. So you can cross check. <laughs> now, the only problem is, now Neil's asked me a very, very good question. So Neil says, can you cross check this to the hours of the day when you are seeing a purchase on Amazon? That's a flipping awesome question. The answer is no. The answer is no, because, but I'm gonna show you how to do it anyway. The answer is no. Because on Amazon, you cannot put a cookie or a pixel on what's called the success page. So there's no way for you to know if somebody has purchased the product from your Google AdWords, okay? There's no way for you to know, which is one of the things that sucks about Amazon, tracking sales. <laughs> Hey, thanks so much for watching that video and I hope that you got some massive value from it. Before you go, do you live in Australia? If you do, this is for you. Would you like to learn how to sell things on Amazon here in Australia? Would you like to know what sells really, really well and what sells for the maximum amount of profit? Would you like to know where you can source those products from, whether that be in China or here in Australia and how to source them so you pay bottom, bottom dollar and get maximum value for what you're doing. If you do, please subscribe to my channel and like this video and you'll learn that and much, much more. It's the exact same information that people like Jeff from New South Wales I've used to make $45,000 a month on Amazon that Sue, who's from the sunny coast, has used to purchase herself a brand spankly BMW every single year as a result of her e-commerce business and the lovely Kate from Barrel in New South Wales has used to make $32,000 a year on, uh, sorry, a month, not a year, a month on Amazon and indeed Anthony who makes $15,000 a month on Amazon selling, as he puts it, 
odds and sods. If you'd like to learn the exact same inf information that they use to maximize their profits for their Amazon businesses, subscribe to this video, like my channel, and post below if you want me to teach you something. Okay, I'm out of here. Speak to you soon. Bye. Subscribe. Subscribe. Do it now. Thank you.